This is the Surface Pro 9, a lovely little Windows tablet to draw on. And that is what I do here. You give me a project, I need a three word drawing prompt. And I use that project to test out this device. Nintendo Switch Robot. All right, we can do this. Now, last year's redesign of the Surface Pro returns, and this time in some new colors. I picked up the Sapphire Blue. It's looking pretty sweet. And there's also a new forest green to go along with the standard silver and black colors. Now, the biggest change to the Surface Pro this year I'm not gonna talk about it because I wanted an Intel Surface Pro, not one of Microsoft's new SQ3 ARM-based processors. Now, I do like how Microsoft is doing it this year, offering both processors in the same device. Now, an ARM processor is going to give you much better battery life. It's going to give off less heat. This is similar to what Apple has done with their M1 processors, but since Microsoft doesn't have the same control over the hardware as they do the software, it's been a lot harder for them to roll out ARM. A lot of software makers just aren't supporting it yet. And since many of the creative apps that I depend on aren't supporting ARM yet, they have to be emulated on this, which means the performance just isn't there yet, which is why for another year I'm sticking with Intel. Now, all of the cool stuff that I loved about last year's Surface Pro redesign is back. You got a camera that allows you to do full HD video, 1080p around the front, a beautiful 2880 pixel by 1920 pixel screen. And yes, this display is 100 in 20 hertz. It does become a bit of a draw on battery life, so if you want to save some of that battery, you can throttle this down to a reasonable 60 hertz. There are two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the Slim Pen 2. Heck yeah! So my notes for this video tell me I should finish talking about the specs before I talk about the pen, but screw it. I've always wanted to love the Surface Pro line, heck, all the Surface products, but one thing has always held me back, and that was the old pen. There was just so much wave when I was drawing with it. And this is a problem in general with Microsoft's pen protocol or MPP. Any laptop or Windows tablet that uses MPP is going to have the same wave problem with the lines. A lot of the things that I review around here like Samsung's Windows tablets and Windows computers, they use Wacom's pen, which tends to give you a much better line. And so I like them more. But one thing that MPP does crazy well, better than Wacom, is palm rejection. The Slim Pen 2 gives you the best of both worlds. There is some wave to the line if you go looking for it, but it doesn't just show up randomly when I'm drawing. And on top of that, I get that fantastic, fantastic palm rejection. I don't have to worry about my palm accidentally leaving a mark or changing the layers on me anymore. And so if you get a Surface device that supports the Slim Pen 2, I now have no problem recommending it. That's not to say that it's perfect, but it's just much better. The pen has a button along the side and it also has a button along the back. Now the side button works pretty much the way you'd expect it to, kind of like a, a right click. The button along the back is a little bit more limiting. It can only open apps. One click opens one app, double clicking will open a dub for an app. If you long click on it, you can open a third app. You can jump into the settings and you can choose which app you want it to open. But I found this to be kind of weird, like it works perfectly. But once an app is open, you have a hardware button on your pen that you can't map to anything else. It becomes kind of worthless. I would love to map this to Control Z or something like that, that I could just use over and over again that would be really helpful. I think there is an option for apps to override this. This is listed in the settings in Windows for that ability to be there. However, this pen is so niche that many developers have just never taken the time to do that. Another thing that separates this pen from anything else I've ever used is that it has haptic feedback. And this is something that developers have taken advantage of. Now, say you're drawing on a piece of paper with a pencil, you can actually feel the drag of the pencil as it goes across the paper. You probably don't think about it, but it's there. It is a physical thing you feel. If you've got a plastic stylus on a glass screen, it feels different. There's not any resistance there, very little resistance there. So what the haptics and the pen do is they, they shake it a little bit in order to mimic that paperish feel. And here it works surprisingly well. In Fresco, I think it feels perfect. It is very subtle. Last year when I tested this out, when this pen first came out, the only app that was really taking advantage of it at the time was Microsoft's whiteboard. And generally I felt like the shaking was like way too strong, which makes sense. It's a new feature and Microsoft 
want you to notice their new feature. So they're gonna really, you know, crank up the intensity there. But this is one of those features where the more subtle it is, the better it is. In fact, I bet a lot of people when they first use the pen, they don't realize that there's actually haptics in it. It just kind of feels natural and they don't understand why. And that's it. That's the thing that I'm, I'm looking for. And I think apps that have implemented it have implemented it well. Now the pen charges one of two ways. You can store it nicely in one of Microsoft's signature keyboard cases, or you can get a little charging dock thing from Microsoft for $35, which this is a little crazy, right? I just yelled at Apple like not even two weeks ago for doing something similar, but Apple's little adapter only cost $10. And Apple is also gonna start shipping that adapter with the Apple Pencil. Whereas here, if you just buy a pen by itself and you don't have the right cover, and if you don't buy that $35 charging thing, that pen is dead. It doesn't work. You can't charge the battery. You can't do anything with it. Ooh, okay. I got all that pen talk out of my system. I have links to this new Surface Pro down below in the description. It links to Best Buy, the sponsor of today's video. Black Friday is here and Best Buy has some amazing deals on tablets, laptops, video games, you name it. Right now they have some deep discounts on the Surface Pro 8, which is almost identical to the Surface Pro 9. It's not just the Surface Pro, you can grab other Surface products like last year's excellent Surface Laptop Studio for a lot less. They're always adding new deals and they rotate in and out, so there's always something new worth seeing. You can also become a Best Buy Total Tech member, which gives you even more exclusive deals along with tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. There's also the Best Buy price match guarantee. Find it somewhere cheaper, Best Buy will match that price. They can get your product to you fast, or if you need it even sooner, just stop by your local store and pick up your order. Check out my links down below in the description to take advantage of Best Buy's great deals today. Even at this low configuration, the Surface Pro performs really well. If I'm running Photoshop or many of the programs in the Adobe suite, I find that it's great for drawing. It's very performant. I wouldn't use this for something like 3D work. For example, if I'm working in Blender, actually it's pretty solid, at least until you get to rendering. That's where you're gonna need a better GPU, which you just can't get on the Surface. That's not what this is for. The Surface is one of those devices that is favoring portability and convenience over power. This tablet is also super quiet. Occasionally I will hear the fan kick on, but when it does, it is a very quiet fan. Now does this get hot? It does get warm when I'm drawing with it, when I'm just carrying it around. It gets hotter than an iPad, but it doesn't get super hot. Now keep in mind, I wasn't doing a ton of processor intensive tasks. I'm sure I could get get it hotter if I really wanted to, but for my standard workflow, it, it seemed fine. Now, when it's plugged in and charging up the battery, yes, then doesn't matter what you're doing, it gets really hot. My hand was definitely sticking to it when I was drawing with it plugged in. Now, I mentioned the type cover a minute ago in terms of charging the pen, and I really like the signature type cover that comes with the Surface. Actually, it doesn't come with it, it's extra. It's $279 if you get it with the Slim Pen 2. Of course, there's that well where the pen charges. That is hidden from you most of the time because it's got a little magnet in it, it folds up, and it's held against the Surface Pro screen. Those magnets also serve a secondary purpose. When the Surface Pro cover is closed, it's not wiggling around like is a problem with many of these type covers that you see on other devices. I say this in all my reviews, I'm gonna say it again. You need a keyboard cover for this device. I say that because I believe the user experience is like 2,000 times better with a keyboard cover, but I also say it because it annoys people in the comments. You could totally use Windows without a keyboard and trackpad. And they're right, you totally can, but it's, it's really frustrating. The configurations of the Surface Pro get really pricey, and that's the main downside of the Surface lines in general. The base price isn't bad. I mean, $1,000 for this? Okay, that's not horrible. But say 128 gigs of storage is not enough for you. What if you want to jump up to 512? Okay, now you're talking about almost doubling the price. And that's because of the way they price these things out and build those configurations. You can't just get a larger hard drive. You also are getting more RAM and you're getting an i7 processor and they upcharge like every single one of these things. So they're just not that flexible, you know, with their configurations. The hinge, it is still one of my favorite parts of the Surface Pro. It is stiff enough to stand up on its own. It can't withstand the full weight of your pen if it's sitting down on the desk. It is gonna slowly go down, but it is stiff enough where this is going to stand up any way you place it. And in general, I, I really love this form factor. When you add in the type cover, it's thin, it's light, and with that laptop feel, you could just slide in your bag. You don't even need a bag. You can carry it around like a notebook. And when we're talking about pros and cons, that is probably, for me, 
the biggest pro. Because it has a pen and it has a type cover case thing, this gets compared to the iPad quite a bit. But one of the big benefits here is on the Surface Pro, you are running Windows. That is a desktop operating system. You can run anything with this. Video editing apps, animation apps, games, maybe not games. This is not quite powered up for games. Lightweight games maybe, but this is a laptop replacement in a way that I don't think the iPad is, at least not yet. The cons for me come down to the price. Like I said, that base price isn't too bad, but if I wanna get this up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and the kind of storage I want, I'm getting well into like the $2,000 range for one of these. That's before you add the type cover. That's really pricey for how how little power you're getting. The Surface Pro really does have a place in the like world of computers. If you need a computer first, not a really heavy computer, but a lightweight computer that doesn't have to do a lot of heavy processing things, and an art tool second, this is a really good option. Now, if you need an art tool first, I don't know if this is the direction I would go into. I would check out my iPad Pro review from a few weeks ago, or even the latest Wacom tablet that you can hook up to your computer. I will pop those videos on the screen over here. So thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.